name's Regina Powers, and uh, obviously I'm the presenter. And so our topic today is what color is your medicine? And as you can see, I left some uh, copies of the five elements in front of you just to give you a brief, um, as we go through, you can always just keep referring to that in some way, shape, or form. But um, I ended up writing a book from the fires, and uh, it was, it's called What Color Is Your Medicine? Enter the Depths of Your Heart with the Five Elements of Chinese Medicine. And so I uh, started my career path in Western medicine. I actually started right here at Vermont College in Montpelier as a registered nurse back in the early 80s. And um, I then succinctly continued to go to school and became a family nurse practitioner. And I met somebody here in Montpelier and we were together for 10 years. And in that end of the 10 year span, he passed away suddenly. He was 35 years old. And um, it was something I, my system, uh, didn't understand, and uh, for the period of uh, the wake and the funeral and all that, it was uh, a period that I truly became very frozen, and I didn't know this. But anyways, after that, someone gifted me to see a healer. They said, this is gonna help you. And now I just want you to get how well versed I was in Western medicine, I was in emergency medicine, and working very fast pace and thought I knew everything. Why would I need a healer? What are they gonna do for me that I can't do for myself? And so I ended up going reluctantly, probably about a month later, but the person that had gifted me really, you know, this person works with Bernie Siegel, he's from France, he's not gonna be in this country for very long and all this stuff and none of that stuff meant anything to me. And so, until I went in and gave my little gift certificate to him, he didn't really speak much English, he didn't understand, he didn't know I had lost somebody. And I quite quickly was put onto a table, and the minute I got onto the table, he just started in my heart, and it was just instantly I began to cry. Didn't say anything, just the energetic holding of whatever was going on in my heart just continued, continued, and continued. And so one hour later, I was full. My sinuses were blocked. I couldn't breathe. And he started pushing, and what I now know is pressure points on my toes. And so I was like, wow, this is like a miracle. At the same time, I'm bawling, crying. And I realized after it was over, he got me up and I sashayed out. There was no mirror, there was no, you know, powder room. And um, so I then got onto a bus and to get myself back home. And I'm holding onto the handle of the bus and this guy starts to hit on me, asking me what I was doing later. And I'm just thinking, I probably have, still have snot hanging off me. My hair is a mess, I was on a table. but. You know, that's all the thing I'm registering, and I'm thinking he's blind. And so I get off that one, and I go on to another one, another bus to get myself home, and the exact same thing happens. And, you know, the whole time I'm thinking, there's something not right, but there must be crazy, and maybe I'm, you know, I'm in San Francisco. And I get back to my uh, apartment, and my roommate, I walk in, and she said, wow, Regina, you look great, like, what did you do? Did you get cut your hair today? Like, you didn't tell me. And I just went to my room, I didn't say anything. And the next day I go into work, exact same thing happens. Ask me, have you lost weight? What did you do? And so it was the beginning of when I realized that the emotional holdings that I had in my physical body structurally changed me but I could not still make sense of it, right? I was young, but I was also, I just didn't think that the entire time I was on that table, I was grieving Billy. Like, I, that just did not commute in my body. And so I then ended up calling my friend who gifted me and said, I wanna go back to that guy. And he's like, why? And I go, 
because I cried the whole time and I know I still have more tears in me and that's why. Like that was my only logic, like at that point. And so then it truly, that began my study. That began my study of there's something so much more out there and all I thought I knew, I knew nothing. Because the realm of healing, really, if we think of our bodies, our minds, and our spirits, especially now because of just the genre of integrative health. And, but if we don't have harmony in all aspects of our body, our mind, and our spirit, health really doesn't come in in a way that we're in a balanced state. Just as you said, right? I'm going to balance it out. And the wild thing is that the element, the medicine of the element, it really helped me situate, like, what was that balancing art? And the only reason I, I got to that was I ended up studying a variety of things. And so I ended up at a four-year school of energy medicine. First, I became a Reiki master. Then I became Touch for Health. I, like, investigated all this stuff because at the same time, mine, I'm still working in emergency medicine. And so I'm still making, you know, way, but everybody that I started to meet, I'd be sewing somebody up and he'd be like, hey, have you ever been down to Chinatown? Have you ever gotten any herbs for anything? These guys are amazing. So here I am down in Chinatown. And every person that would, I was in the emergency room one day and I felt like crap. And this respiratory therapist out of the blue, hey, Regina, you look like crap today. And I go, yeah, I feel like it. And so she goes, sit down. I just got uh, acupuncture. I have needles. She puts them in my body, pulls a curtain. I'm on a gurney. Fifteen minutes later, I sit up and I'm like, what did she do to me? Like, I just, I felt fine. I finished my entire 12-hour shift and I was like, I was not in the mood to be working. I was fine. So all this stuff started to be introduced to me. So I finally ended up at an integrated medicine conference. And the first speaker was a Dr. Ong, A-U-N-G, never forget him, little Chinese man. And he stood up there and he worked with people's energy. And it wasn't about, I'm a master of this, I'm a master of that, but he brought somebody up and he basically turned their field upside down. And it was all with energy. And I was fascinated. He brought us into our Tantian, the note that holds you in your physical body. Like he just taught us, like introduction really into Chinese medicine. And it wasn't so much that I was fascinated with Chinese medicine, it was the energy that he was, the, all the art skills that he was doing that I was fascinated with. But the one thing he handed out, and to this day I still have this sheet. This is almost 30 years later. And as you can see, it's been copied a million times over. And uh, this was what he handed out. And he went through the way that the body has a way of storing and a way of, of um, really storing energy when it's not in flow. And so I was truly drawn into the elements. The organ structure, the emotional structure, color was fun. You know, I ended up getting to sit with him at lunch one day and I was in a blue shirt, a brilliant blue shirt. And he, ah, it's an interesting color for you. You need that. You need deep reflection. You need, he just boom, 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 boom. And here I am crying. I have no idea why I'm crying. But he read my soul. Like he read internally in me that I couldn't ever explain it to anyone. But I knew that there was medicine in that. So what I did, I took this sheet and I ended up going back into, I covered family practices for people and I worked emergency medicine. The week I got back, this physician in Gloucester said, hey, can you cover my practice? I'm going away. I said, sure, no problem. I had my little sheet in hand and the first girl comes in, 14 year old girl, pale as could be, she comes in, no mother, it's a guardian. So I knew right away the family system was off, right? I thought, I'm not going to start with that. I'm like, hey, you got any medical problems? What's going on with you? And she's like, yeah, I use an inhaler. I go, oh, okay, I use anything else. Yeah, I use a little cream when I get an itch. And so, you know, remind you, I have my little sheet in hand now, and I'm well versed in this now for my five day conference. But I thought I'm going to give it a shot. And I just looked and I said, hey, you know, it's funny, the lung carries a bunch of different things. And I just learned this stuff. And 
I'm just wondering, have you lost anybody in your life? And she said, yeah, that's so weird you asked me that. My grandfather died. I go, when was that? And she goes, when I was eight. I go, when did you start using your inhaler? She goes, when I was eight. So we just went through her whole life and a very snapshot, just, just what the paper said. And I said, wow, it's the wildest thing. So each of these open in different ways. And the interesting thing is the earth is the element of relationship. It's the element of family. It's community. But it also has to do with how you feel supported and how you feel nurtured. And so this kid, I knew, had nobody but a guardian in the room with her. And it wasn't a relationship that was a, a nur you could just, you could feel it. It was, I'm here because I'm supposed to do this. This is my task. It's the bus. It's, you know. And the first thing I said to her was, wow, did you and your grandfather do anything fun together? Did you have a song? The earth element opens with singing. It's the most nurturing of them all, but it's the nurturing to the self. And right away, the kid, oh my God, that's so weird you asked me that. This is a 14-year-old girl who's as pale as can be. We had, I had a plastic keyboard, and I played plastic keyboard with my grandfather. And I said, I want to hear this song. And if you could sing it, I'll sing along with you. If you, you know, she, she didn't need me to do anything. She just burst into the song. And as she burst into the song, the guardian is crying, I'm crying, she's bawling her eyes out. And in that moment, it was, her whole face was white. Like she was a pale kid, like just, you could tell. She just was depressed and life was not happy for her. She pinked up like she had knew her heart just burst open in front of me. And that was my very first case, the very first time I used this sheet. And that was really the beginning of me, of a 25 year process of, I wanna say hiding, but I will tell you, I was in partly never sharing what I was doing because at the same time I was learning energy medicine, at the same time I was studying all these different things. So for me, if I was to touch this girl, it was to open up her lung meridian. At the same time, she's crying and put her hand on her heart so the rest of her body could start to feel like, oh, wow. And so this ended up, as you can tell, the, the stomach itself in the spleen, in the earth element, this is probably one of the most significant of the elements. And I say this now after digesting the book for almost a year now, but also, I've been working with this for 25 years, and I never took the time out until after the fire to really digest them to the point of um, allowing the medicine to really come into me. And I'll tell you why. I ended up working with um, cancer patients once a week for the last two years, up until the fire. And I realized with cancer that there's a uh, a flow with it that is a there's a stuckness right and in the breast cancer that's part of the earth element it's fortified in our muscles but it's also fortified in our soft tissue and in energy the way it works is the left side is how we receive and the right side is how we let go and in the most predominant breast cancers in the United States of America is on the left breast. And I'm not saying that there's a correlation about receiving, but I am gonna say that I've seen enough and I've been working with patients long enough that the majority of the patients that I worked with in the left that couldn't receive, they could overextend, they could give to their nth degree, to their kids, their family in the midst of their chemo, having reconstruction breast surgery, still bringing the kids to soccer, and the husband's still working, and so, I, I say this because it's not, I don't have the answer to it, but I will say that when I bring this type of medicine in, the biggest piece of this is about taking care of the self and the relationship with the self and the relationship and the boundaries with the self. And the reason I say this is because to be the compassion or to hold the compassion for ourself we have to be able to understand like what that really means to nurture ourselves. 
And Christine Northrup, she writes many things in women's bodies, women's health. And in the book, I do quotes of different things. But one of the things that's so poignant with her is that she said, women have difficulty receiving. They have difficulty receiving love. They have difficulty receiving pleasure. They have difficulty receiving rest. They have difficulty just receiving for themselves. And part of it is that we import it through alcohol. We import it through different ways of sugar, different means that we feel like we feel happy with it, but it doesn't create, like in our in Angar, but his harmony in the body and the mind and the spirit. Like we're avoiding that harmony by ways that we basically don't find pleasure in our system. And the extension in each one of the elements has an imbalance, right? So in the earth, the imbalance is overextending, is worry, is obsession, is obsessed with detail. There's certain things in each one of the categories that in the opposite light of it is empathetic, sympathetic, compassionate. Those are the places in us that when we take and fully receive that stuff in for our own self-care, that's really our health care for ourselves. And so I always uh, put the slide in of self-care in the earth because the enormity of it is huge. But one of the things with uh, giving and receiving um, is that they're inherently interconnected. And if we block one, we block the other. And this is a fun little thing that I do. I do journey work, I do a variety of things. But if you just sit with yourself for a minute, like right now, and just go inward, put your feet on the ground. It's a little exercise. And you can do this at home true, truly when you're like really inward. But this is just to teach you a little bit about how to check in with your own system and the balance of it. So if the left hand is up and the right hand is down, it's like we're a little tea kettle, right? And, you know, short and spout when it's tip me over, pour me out, the whole little cute little scenario. But the reality is when we overextend ourselves, right? So you just even put that in part in your system about when you've overgiven, right? And this part of the receiving piece from any part of our system ends up to be almost like it doesn't exist in a way that should be in a balanced state. That if we feel like, oh, I'm just gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do this. This part of the receiving, it's almost like we can take in breadcrumbs for ourselves and we think that's enough. But the reality is it doesn't create balance because if you look at this as a system, just even breathing into your own self. When you're alone and at home, just breathe in to ask, where in my life? And you can ask, where in relationship? Where in my body? Where is it that there, it, you're deeply not receiving for yourself and you're overextending? And notoriously, when I'm on the land or on the earth with people, this truly, uh, they close their eyes, they go inward, and it's, oh, it's, I would say 98.9% .9 of the time that imbalance is, is truly palpable in their system. The other piece of this is that with this blockage piece, if our boundaries around ourselves aren't truly like in healthy relationship with ourselves, we end up having difficulty with relationship with other. And so the part of the self-care piece of that, like Brene Brown has recently done a lot of um, information about the giving and receiving the boundaries. She ended up doing a Netflix cameo. Did you see that? Yeah. And it was all about boundaries. And it's, you know, I mean, self-care, I could say this and it's easy to digest, but do we really like stop to do some of these things? And the daring to set boundaries is about having the courage to love ourselves, even when we risk disappointing others. And I think that really just brings it home because it is daring to love ourselves enough that we're, it's okay to say no. It's okay to stop in the moment of, I'm not really sure how I feel, let me get back to you. Just that statement alone 
is a bounded statement of not overextending. And, you know, the piece of this, like there's another, there's so many different points in our body and because of the system that I use, I use a lot of acupressure. And the self-compassion, these are just, I just keep giving you tidbits to play with on yourself. But So again, remember the left side is how we take in, right? And the right side is how we let go. And so the self-compassion point is right up here, just under your clavicle. And so I just ask, you know, yeah, just take your two finger points. Nobody has to disclose anything. This is just a self-check on yourself. And when you really, you're rubbing the point, if there's any tenderness, yeah. And, and honestly, it's just, uh, you breathe behind the point, and then you just uh, keep asking, you know, can I take in compassion for myself? Can I take in kindness for myself? Do I allow that into myself? Just, it's, it, and the piece of the puzzle is always your uh, reactive piece, right? So you're breathing into it, you're rubbing the point, if it's tender, you're, you know that there's a blockage in the meridian. You know that, that you're not receiving the kindness for yourself or giving yourself the compassion to yourself. And it's more of a, each, you know, you can pull up a meridian chart to look at different points for yourself, but it's a, a very interesting thing is when I'm working with people and I just, just a little tap and the reality is, is those little taps can open places in us. All, all we do is, is we put the thought and we switch it. Because it's not that we sit and think, I'm unkind to myself. I'm not compassionate. We don't sit and do that. But it's the things we do to ourselves, right? And those are the things that are not kind. Those are the things that are not compassionate to ourselves. So... Doing something nice for yourself every day, even if it's just to rub that little point, to give yourself some kindness. So as you can see, each one of the elements has a variety of points on the, the, the physical body. The lung and large intestine is the meridian, just like the spleen and the stomach is in the earth. And in the large intestine and the stomach, it's an interesting one, the metal, because it's the place that we take in life when we breathe life in, right? That's our lung. And when we can take in the pure chi from the heavens, we actually can take our whole self in. And this one is a little sticky because I think we breathe fully, right? How often do we stop to truly take in a full breath? So breath work in this, but it's also lung pathology when people have issues with bronchitis or yearly sniffles or they have that certain cough that they can't get rid of in the season. The emotional content with this is that the stuckness in it, like the beautiful little girl, it was grief. It was the loss of her grandfather. And so she had asthma and she also had skin pathology and this is fortified on the skin and the hair. So when you realize, it's almost like a puzzle, like a connecting of the dots, and the dots all work. And the interesting thing is this is 5,000 year old medicine. This is not something I, you know, came up with because I did this, this, and this in this workshop. This has been around for centuries. And the reality is, is they truly do connect the dots. Like I couldn't make the stuff up. And the stability in that girl and the, uh, the process of grief is a normal process, right? We take a year with anniversaries when we have a loss. And if you go back and just for me telling you when I was on that table, when Billy had died and I was gifted a healer, I could not stop crying. This opens with tears. This opens with crying, this element. So you realize tears are a gift on so many different levels, but we sometimes stop them. And when you think about how we stop them, we stop our breath. We, I'm good, I'm, I'm, I'm totally good, I'm, I'm good. You know, and the reality is we're not good. And we don't let the flow of energy through our system. So again, it brings the whole thing back. That's why I bring that and leave those so you can see the charts. But it really is an interconnected of all of them. So if your 
earth element as that girl's community or family was off, look where the metal element comes in. It directly correlates, right? And the fire, her heart, when it burst open, it's all in a generating cycle. So our body generates chi, it generates the opening if we allow our breath to say, get down into our toes, like all the way in. Then our taking in the pure chi from the heavens opens our lungs. If we can truly inhale and exhale. And part of this system, I, I, I say this and I slow down because breath work has a variety of options out there. But one of the, you know, the Navy SEALs from uh, that goes out in to do their missions, they do breath work before every single mission. And if you take in, just do this, three breaths, hands on your lap like your body is gonna be planted in the earth. And we breathe in, with our mouths open. And breathe out. Breathe in again. This time just feel your stomach come up because you wanna get into your pelvis, right? You wanna get into your whole breath. Blow out. Three breaths is what it takes to relax your system. And it truly just switches your body. And so I tell people, even if you just got out of bed in the morning, put your feet on the ground, and you did nothing but this. Feet planted on the earth and take three breaths and feel yourself on the earth, feel your feet fully planted down. Because that connection, after a while, when you start to breathe, say, your spirit into form, into your physical form, that's the nature of truly what the elements bring. It's bringing us into our spirit, bringing our spirit home into the physical. Our temple, our body, is the house that, you know, is the house of Chen, as they say, they, it's the house of spirit. But we're so blocked that we don't bring it all the way in. We don't bring it all the way home. So when people are, oh my God, I'm freezing, oh my toes never get warm, I, you know, and this is all okay, right? You could have thyroid disease, it could be blocked here. You could have, so there's so many different aspects to this and it doesn't make it bad or good. It's just more of like, huh, okay, that's a message. Maybe I should start breathing in this area or look at the point system that goes to it. So it's, it is like a little detective thing, but it's kind of, I, I find it fascinating, but I also find it fun. <laughs> so one of the hardest lessons in life is letting go. And whether it's guilt, anger, love, loss or betrayal, change isn't easy. But a lot of times we fight to hold on and we fight to let go. And if you think about this as an energetic component, when we hold on to anything and there's a grasp in it, there's no movement of energy. And I bring this up again over and over again because if we can't receive fully, right, we're blocked off in some area. The energy does not move through fully through our system. And it's the same thing when we hold on to the past. It's the exact same thing. How can you breathe in life when you, this is not open? So hence, well, my little tea kettle analogy is I have people start to play with, what am I still hanging on to? And if it feels odd to you, I would say that there is some type of disconnect or I would say maybe a distortion or maybe a memory or maybe something from the past you're still hanging on to. Until you can open your hands wide and full and be free, it's really about a system that lives in a closed way. And as you can tell, the body doesn't do well with systems that close themselves off. And hence, that's where illness starts. So the water element is a fascinating element in and of itself because it's our true life force energy and it also is deep in our bones and in our teeth. So issues with bones and teeth 
as well as the kidney and the bladder. And the interesting thing is right up off of our kidneys is our adrenal system. And in the back part of us, our adrenals can get tired. And so people have heard of adrenal fatigue. People get sick, they're immune compromised. In the element of water, the kidney and the bladder, they are our true pumping agent that helps filter out our blood and take the impurities from our body. <coughs> So if it doesn't work well, those things get stuck in our system. And so adrenal fatigue and in, in, in the part of the water system that, say, runs like this, it's as if it gets so much stimulation, we get anxious. And so anxiety and fear are part of this water element. And most of the time, the kidneys have a blockage. It's like it's frozen, right? The water is frozen in our system, and it doesn't allow our energy to run free. So that constant stimulation or hum that a lot of people go around with, right? It's a low-level anxiety in, in, in the system. And the problem with this is that those hormones that get pumped out into our system, they cause disease and they cause illness. So part of this, I give, I, I try to give a bunch of different flavors in it, but you can see if there's no calm or peace in our system, right? Just taking in the breath, just putting yourself here on the earth. I am calm. I am relaxed. It's almost as if your thought patterns and your system have to be retrained. They have to learn what it is to calm, learn what it is to come into a peaceful and balanced system. And so in the water, the piece of this is also the reflective piece. Like when we look at the water, sometimes it has shadows for us to look at. And those shadows are parts of our system that we had no idea what was going on. You know, when you get something from the past and you're like, oh my God, I never even thought of that. That's like a shadow piece. And so in the water, it has a lot to do with our ancestry, it has a lot to do with our, um, really the past of, of what we've brought forward from them, but it also is our learning and teaching. So there's a wisdom to it. it um, when we say love what we do in life, we end up sharing the wisdom to others because it's an effortless flow. We don't hold on to it. We want to embark, we want to help people or assist people in whatever it is, whether it's creating clean water, bringing you know, uh, a light system into a house so you don't have to use um, electricity as much. Like there's so many different ways that where we learn and teach. But the interesting thing is this opens with groaning and if you break a bone, you groan fairly loud. And so it's an interesting system because it's a way when the opening parts of these, that's how we open the meridians. And so it's, it's almost like humorous in some parts, but I do work with people on the land and when I'm doing work with the anxiety and fear of people, and all I do is start rubbing the adrenal system and the kidney system and have them start groaning when they're fully earthed in and they're really grounded. And the enormity of what get released in their system usually brings them to tears. The anxiety goes, but the tears come up. Because in most of the system, in the elements, there's usually a sadness behind each one of the elements. And it's almost because we don't understand what the emotional content is of this hum, say, in the water system. But what's behind it is a sadness that we probably never felt. And so the, sometimes the ancient stuff or the older things, when we find our childhood stuff come up, we can let it go easily if we don't hold on to it. But so ships don't sink because of the water around them. Ships sink. Ships sink because of the water that gets in them. So it's don't let what's happening around you get inside you and weigh you down. 
and the seer clearly Joseph Campbell brings that home the cave you fear to enter may hold the treasure you seek and I say that because the fear and anxiety a lot of times the energy that it takes to hold that in place is a lot larger energy than it is to dissipate it and so sometimes it's really getting in touch with it and I've been around enough people and through the book I write cases in it so I actually share cases of different ways to work with each of the elements but also share cases so you can put yourself in the book so you make the understanding or you put your say illness or part of your physical body in it emotionally or so the wood we can't let go of our anger or our resentments this is in the wood so wood is in the liver and the gallbladder and so in Chinese medicine they believe that anger is stored in the liver and so there could be fatty liver there could be a liver disease uh, complex uh, gallstones many different things but the interesting thing with this is it's your detoxification pathways so if you think about this if you're not open right you can't detoxify your system if you put in things that stop that flow then we start to have issues with say maybe a little bit of anger maybe a little bit of frustration maybe things we can't let go and the interesting thing with wood is the ligaments and the tendons are the things that we run with right we create motion with they work well with and this opens with motion the element of not opens but it's the element of motion so it helps to move the body and it helps to keep the elements all moving just as much as the fluid in your system but this opens with shouting and it's an interesting thing because just the way uh, climate is now politically there's a lot of uh, say anger underneath I would say and a little bit of a shouting things going on and the reality is is that we can't really get to tolerance or forgiveness if you're running that type of energy on a continual pattern and you can see where the imbalance is because majority of the time there's a <laughs> stiffness in the body wood is very flexible and the spine the that what the ligaments hold our vertebral bodies in and so the element of wood is really motion so when you can move and you have a flexibility with yoga but you have movement in the body internally and externally you don't hold things as much like you know I, I hate to say this but like let's just do a comparison just because of his body type because you can really see this but like Barack Obama was very flexible and fluid and you know this isn't me judging anyone it's just noticing a body type and he was very like a fluid guy and you could tell his anger probably wasn't his uh, element that was out of balance like it didn't look that way right and so when you start to look at people you start to realize their body structures and the way they hold themselves are very much in line with the elements when someone has anxiety you can feel that you can feel that hum in their system sometimes when you sit down right you sit down and you whoop, that person feels like they're pretty anxious like you can start to feel it just as much as you can start to feel someone that's depressed right the heaviness of the system so all of this I've been doing for such a long time that I do have that felt sense of people but I always think that the body types share a lot about different things and we realize that holding on to anger is like grasping a hot coal you have the intent of throwing it at someone else and honestly you are the one that gets burnt not the other person there's no real you know that doesn't really solve anything and the other is the more anger you hold in your heart towards the past the less capable you truly are of loving in the present and you know there's no other way to say that nicely but that's I think there's so much truth in that in wisdom in it and you know with the wood to get on the other side of that is truly to find forgiveness 
And when we can truly find forgiveness, we can truly be at peace in our system. And so the fire is the heart. It's the meridians of the heart, small intestine, the triple warmer, which is the largest organs of the body. And it's also the sex circulation. So you can see the emotions can be hysteria, overstimulation. It also can be hate. And the other opposite of that is love, joy, and contentment in life. And so I bring in this, I could bring in a bunch of different cases in it, but I'll just share. I told you that I lost everything in the fires in Glen Ellen. And the interesting thing was it wasn't my first fire. It was my second fire. And the first fire was my family home. And they were selling to a South African family from South Africa. So they had a different skin color than the whole neighborhood I lived in. And so there was an element of hate in this. And fire, as I told you, has an equal and opposite balance. And so the second fire is what brought me to really look at like, wow, I need to clear something out of my lineage, out of my closet that I have yet to clear. And so this really brought me to a deeper level of what the meaning of the elements really meant. And truly, we can take this as far as we want to take it, you know? And laughter opens the heart. Laughter opens the fire element. And when you think about when you have a great joke and someone really makes you laugh, like we've been laughing, you know, there's no mind thought in it. There's no... I gotta go in five minutes, right? You're in the moment. It's just so the energy that opens all the vascular system in the heart is truly laughter. So I remember years and years ago, the Reader's Digest had a little thing about um, laughter is the best medicine, and you know I never forgot that because truly it is the best medicine. It opens all your vascular system. It's the best thing to open all your meridians. And really, the most effective medicine here on earth is love. In love that is unconditional. And I would say that's one of the most hardest things for all of us in our love of ourself that has no conditions in it. Because when we can truly find that for ourselves, we can truly find that for others. And the task is really not to seek for love, but to merely seek and find all the barriers within yourself that we built against us. And Rumi is my man of my uh, quotes, which I truly love. And the trueness of coming home to our heart, coming home fully, is that we really remember the truth of who we really are. We can be still with that, we can be quiet with ourselves, our heart beats effortlessly, with no overstimulation, no need for stimulation, because we're at home in ourselves. So we carry inside us the wonders we seek outside us. So when we start to look inward and find that true reflection within ourselves, that's how we find our way home. And so I ended up, after that, writing this what color is your medicine and really is entering the depths of your heart with the five elements of Chinese medicine and this gave you a depiction of how I work with them but it also shows through the book it gives you cases and understandings of it and in the back it gives you recommendations and that sheet that I gave you here there's a more in-depth one with true um, meanings and understandings of the chart in and of itself, as well as a worksheet, because life is a process and it's never ending. And so I always tell people, the worksheet is not about a one day I fill out the form, it's a lifetime. And so the book at this moment is really, that's how it's being received. It's being used over and over again, more as just taking it in as you can digest one element at a time. So I will stop there and ask you if you have any questions. I have a hard time following the chart myself. In what way? Well, you know, when you have like the liver pointing to the spleen or wood pointing to earth, 
Yes, I understand that connection. So in the, the, the traditional Chinese medicine, they have what they call a generating cycle, and then they have an opposing cycle. And so I don't go into the depths of the, the okay. opposing cycles. I use it more as a tool for you to do it as the generating cycle. Okay. Because so it's really the following, following this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then uh, my intent is the path of least resistance we take in the most. If we have to get stuck on concepts, we lose our way. And the interesting thing is the reviews thus far has been Wow, you've simplified Chinese medicine, and I truly, I don't, uh, um, I, I completely honor traditional Chinese medicine in this tradition, but I do not take and I do not uh, say that I'm well versed in it. The way I'm versed in it is an experiential, and the beautiful thing is I ended up, someone asked me to do a, a, a workshop with a Chinese medicine person. And uh, at first I was a little intimidated, and I said, you know, I'll share with you what I do, and she shared with me, I mean, she's well-versed in herbs and pulses and the whole thing, and um, so we came together, and I said, uh, I'm really good at the experiential process of each one of these elements, and I'm really good at the emotional and the physical construct from the Western medicine things. And she said, I'm really good with all the other stuff. So it was 45 women in the group, and I did the experiential process, and she did a lecture of the House of Shen, of bringing your heart home, your spirit home to your body. And it was the most beautiful thing. We finished. Everybody gave feedback. We were outside. She looked at me and she said, I could have never done what you just did. And I said, I could have never done what you just did. And the beautiful thing was the poem that's in the end of the book, I wrote right after she did her lecture. My heart came into my shin in a way that I had never come. So it's, I, I say this because each one of us has a gift. And each one of us brings to the table our gift and how we have makeshifted it and how we have molded it. But really, in the light of service, this is how I bring it forward. And so you'll understand in the book, like the understanding of the, the cycle of generation. And I bring in the opposing, I te do little teaching of the elements themselves. But the reflection of the natural world and how we see ourselves in it is really the tool that I use. And so the earth as an element in of itself the water has an element in and of itself. Like I use the reflection of water, and I can use water as a tool. Mm -hmm. So each of the elements I use as an elemental way, yeah. whereas in, in the Chinese tradition, they use it more for their points and their, where they're going to put their needles. And Yeah, so that's the, yeah. I don't know if I even answered Yes, you did. Oh, OK. <laughs> no, you're good? OK. Yeah, a lot of different um, ways to look at things in life, right? And that's the way I just chose. So when I bring the teachings and I encapsulate them, the elements themselves, the earth, self-discovery, self-compassion, self-care, meadow, you learn to let go so you can breathe easily. Bottom line, right? Water, we find our inner peace in the midst of chaos, and that chaos is in internally. The wood, if we align our inner strength, it brings a direction and a focus. When we think about what we shared about the liver and the detoxification pathways, and if they're clogged, and in wood, vision is part of wood. It is clouded, it is not clear and focused. In the fire, when we ignite that internal flame, that's when our soul and our heart is truly set on fire. So that is really in its balanced state. That's how I bring the elements in more of an experiential manner. And that's 
Mm -hmm. So it has become apparent that our truest nature to fully connect, heal, and grow is to be mirrored by something that reflects our full essence. And I truly believe the natural world is that ideal mirror. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah? Do you look at Western medicine totally different from how you viewed it before, now that you know what you know now? Yeah, you know, um, I, I respect it on every level and aspect of it because I would not be who I am as a practitioner today if I did not know Western medicine. And the balance or the imbalance, I would say, in Western medicine is that we don't speak to these concepts in a way that, you know, when the little girl comes into the room, it's about, let me refill your prescription let me give you your cream, you're gonna be okay, make sure you're in counseling. And the reality was that girl lost her grandfather, you know, six years prior, nobody was gonna be rehashing that. And the reality is, is sometimes it just takes to go back in the moment of when you started using something. Mm -hmm. That's the switch that gets you into the puzzle. And so I've learned <clears throat> over and over again Hey, when did you start being afraid of that? When did that anxiety come in? When did you start having that sadness? Wow, let's go back in time. What 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 happened? And it, it's truly, it's not about being a therapist and in the room. It's not about, it's just having them connect the dot. And because you can then open up the pathway in. Wow, why don't we just try this thing? Why don't we just breathe into here? Why don't we do this? And see what you feel like. And notoriously, most people are brought to tears in some way, shape, or form is a way for them to open. And once that opening happens, it's almost like the tea kettle comes back into a balance that it just didn't have. And, you know, I think it's because my own life and I've been through a variety of different storms, let's say that, and each one has brought me into more of really tuning in and looking at the messages, but it was really just ways for me to wake up because Western medicine is amazing, but it lacks certain things that don't bring in that avenue in, and it doesn't take that much time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had a physician, a family physician ask me, when are you going to go and teach this? When are you going to go and teach this to med school? I was like, why, why aren't you teaching it? And I said, I have to get it out first, and then we'll see. The doctors that you work with uh, will frown on you. No, they send this. all the integrative people to me, and they say I can't do what she does, but go to her. Okay. Yeah. So I have another. I have a enormous respect. I had a physician read the book, and he said, "I can't do what you do. I, I, I just can't do that. I can't go there, Regina." And I said, "You know what, Doctor W? I have the most utmost respect for you for understanding that and acknowledging it." And I would be happy to see your patients and see this avenue if this is the way you want to go. So please make up a flyer and I'll mm -hmm. tell them about your book. And so it's, I don't have any attachment to any of this. I have, the only, the only intent that I have is that I just want to help people to be able to understand their bodies in a way that they truly can look at it to take care of it. In a way that has a little bit of a different thing than just taking a pill. And I know how to do that, and people know how to take pills. They're really good at it. But there's other ways that doesn't take that much effort and that much time. And you know, I could I could tell you case upon case upon case with young adolescents smoking dope for anxiety, and God bless them. And I did a few little things with him outside in nature, and he looked right at me and goes, "You mean that's all I have to do?" I said, just tell me how you feel right this morning. He goes, I felt great. I go, when was the last time you smoked weed? Last night. I said, no, let's try no weed tomorrow. And it just was like, let's just let's just put it out there. You know, it doesn't take, it's the, it's not a lot of effort. Yeah. So, yeah. Anybody else? Okay. Well, thank you all for coming out on this rainy evening. <laughs>